All right, all right. Hello, everyone. It's been a little while since I've talked about input fields using auto layout, variance components, nested components, and all that good stuff inside of Figma. So I wanted to make an updated video based on a video I made previously where I talked about input fields and how to use base components to kind of manage a giant set of variants because as you get into um, even much more complex design systems than the simple one you see here, it can be very difficult to manage simple things like, for example, if I wanted to change the radius of my buttons or my input fields and I wanted them to be more like this pill shape, um, if I didn't have a base component, I wouldn't be able to do it the way you just saw. Um, so I'd have to go into each instance, update it, and you know you can apply this to the any any variant property. Um, so it's really just like a useful way of managing large variant sets, and it's gotten even easier with some of the updates that Figma has made recently. So now we can manage um, big variant sets much more simply using a feature that allows us to show and hide nested variants or just elements within our variants. So that's what I'd like to show you today. Um, and this applies really nicely to something like an input field. So let's go ahead and get started making it and I'll go through the details as we get into it. Um, so this is kind of what we're making. And once you see how this applies, then you can add in um, different elements, different things that you might need for your input field but this is kind of just a simple example to get us started. So to start, I have my title, I have my input field, I've got some icons. Um, this would be like if a dropdown was selected and then my descriptive text. So I'll take my um, input text, press Shift A to create an auto layout. I'm gonna press command, Hold Command and change the padding in here to be about 16. And I'll just add a stroke in here real quick. Great. I'm going to give it a little bit of a radius. Let's try eight. And now I can set this to left center and I'll start dragging in the icons that I'm going to need. So I want to set these. I want one of the icons to hug the left and the other one to hug the right. So to do this, I'm going to set my text to fill the container. Another way you can do this is hold option and then just double click and it will fill the container. So now that I have my input field, I'm just going to take my title and my descriptive text, put them below, select all three, press shift A, and now I have pretty much everything I need um, and I'm just gonna make the drop down as well. So to do that, I'm just going to do option one, probably bump this up a little bit. And these will be my drop down options. And you can, of course, you know, if this was uh, what's your favorite fruit, you change this to apple, pear, banana, whatever you need. So I'll select these three options, press shift A. And now I'm just going to add 16 pixels padding. And remember, if you hold down command when you click in here, you can change the padding on all four sides. That's not a new update, but it's new compared to the last video I made. All right. Um, so there's actually, I'm just going to change this real quick because I actually don't want the padding to be on the entire container. I want it on the element basis. So I'm just going to press shift A on all three of these options. And now if I press shift return, it will take me out to this main container and I'm just going to change the padding on these. So now I can set all three of these to fill the container and I'll bump these up to about 12. So now I have my drop down option. I'm going to add a little bit of a stroke to it. And same thing here. I'll just give it a little bit of a radius. Beautiful. So now that I have um, all of the elements that I need, let me just change this color. Now that I have all of the elements that I need, this acts as my base component. So basically, I want to put all of the elements that I need inside of one container. 
and then this container becomes my component and then I can set everything else to show and hide. So let's just clean this up a little bit real quick. Um, I want this text to fill the container. I also want this text to fill the container. That one's already filling. I need this text to fill the container and I need all of these to fill the container. The reason I'm doing that is because I want these to fall down onto another line um, as I add whatever content I add later on. So everything should be good to go now. Now I have my main component. I'm just gonna rename this to dot base input field, input field. And now this is going to be hidden from my design system once I publish later on. But for now, this is gonna act as my base component. And now we get to do the fun stuff of actually creating the different variants that we need. So I'm gonna turn this into a component. And now I can very simply come in here and start identifying the different items that I have, the different elements through this layer section. So I can come in, select a layer. So this is my right icon. Click this little icon that creates a Boolean property. And now I can just name this right icon and create property. So you'll see real quick, if I pull this out, I can toggle on and off and just ignore that. That, that might be a bug inside of Figma. I've seen that for a while, but it doesn't actually uh, keep the element in there. Um, so you'll see I can turn this on and off and we're going to apply the same thing to our left icon. So I'll come down to layer, create a boolean property and we'll call this left icon. The value is just defining whether it is on or off on our default view. So I'm going to keep it to true for now. Create property. So now I can come over here and turn on and off my left icon, which is pretty handy, I think. Whereas, you know, previously we had to put in all of our different uh, elements that we needed and create another variant for one that had the icon, one that didn't have the icon. Now we can just simply tell Figma, this is an element that should be able to be hidden or shown. Um, and we're gonna do this for all of our elements. So this is our dropdown. I can set this one probably to false because most of the time I'm not gonna have that dropdown visible. This one is my descriptive text and I probably will have a title all of the time so now you can pretty easily see that I can toggle on and off these different elements maybe I don't need a right icon maybe I do left icon right icon and what's great about these icons in particular is they're coming from an icon set called hero icons which is free you can download it um, on the Figma store. And I can simply change this icon to another instance. Um, so like here, I might have a drop-down chevron, for example. So these are nested um, components within my main component. Okay, so now that we have our base created, with everything identified as Boolean values. Now we can simply go in and start creating our um, different states and the different variant types that we might have. So I'll go back to the example just to show you real quick. We might have um, our default input field and then another one for our dropdown. And then we have our different states. So we have an active state, a default state, an error state. These are just some examples. I'm sure when you create your design system, you're probably gonna have much more, but this is just to give you an idea so we can get started. So I have my base input here. I'm gonna hold Alt, pull out an instance of it, and now just press Shift A to create an auto layout around it. And I'm gonna get rid of the padding. And now I wanna set the input within it 
I want to set it to fill the container and the reason I'm doing that is so that when I drag this hopefully it will fill the container so if that's not happening like it isn't for me that's because my input here is set to fixed I'll just set that to fill so everything else in here as I drag this is filling the container nicely so now this is actually going to act as our different variants so I can rename this to um, input field and now we're going to turn this into a component as well that's option command K and now we can just start creating our different variants using those boolean properties that we created earlier so the first one we're just going to call type and I just have my default type or my input and then we'll call this one drop down so for my input I'm gonna have my different states my active and error state and for my drop down I'm gonna have my active and error as well so let's start creating the drop down so over here I'm going to change this to a chevron down okay and I can come back in here and I can select this real quick and I probably don't need that left icon maybe I do maybe I don't um, but you can quickly manage that within this variant so I don't need to create a new variant if I want the left icon or don't want the left icon same for descriptive text if at any point I need it or don't need it I can just simply turn it on and off so I'm going to turn off the left icon and I'm going to turn off the descriptive text so this kind of acts now as my drop down and this one is my input field so for my default input field I don't need that right icon and maybe I do want the left icon but like I said before you can toggle this on and off however you'd like okay so now let's start creating our states so I'm just gonna come in here real quick and create a new variant and we'll just call it um, actually sorry I'm gonna come in here real quick and create um, new variant property yes and we're going to call it state so now I will just call this one for now we'll just keep these as default I'm gonna duplicate one of them and we'll just call it active so real quick I'm gonna turn this variant set into an auto layout by pressing shift a and this will just allow me to very quickly and easily manage the position of these and then I'll show you guys in a little bit how we can organize this a little nicer um, but for now I could just come in here select this and now I just want to change the color of it and now that is pretty much my very simple active state so I can come in here select this that's active so I'm just gonna pull this out real quick and we can test to make sure everything's working so I've got my drop down I've got my input and I've got my active um, the only minor thing that I'm noticing is there's a little bit of a height difference potentially but we can work that out later um, but for now everything looks like it's working I've got my default state my active state I can switch between whether it's a input or a drop-down got my descriptive text so everything is looking good so now we just continue doing that I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna call the it's still an input we're gonna call the state error and I'm just going to simply turn on that right icon now which is very nice that I can just toggle that on and off as I need I'm going to change the color here to red I'm going to change the color here to red as well and the outline color should be red so now that is kind of my error state and the same thing applies for our drop down I can duplicate this state we'll call it active and now I can press enter to drill into this always make sure you're using enter shift enter it's just such a nice way to navigate 
things that are nested within. You can press enter, shift enter to drill in and out of containers very easily. So I press enter to go into here and now I'm just gonna turn on my drop down. So now that pretty much acts as my active state. If I want, I can go Chevron up potentially. And there you go. That's my little input field. And then if I wanted to, I can come over here, pull one down, and we'll just press enter again, add that descriptive text, and now we're gonna make this an error state. So we'll just say red in here, and as well on that descriptive text, make it red, and now the state is error. So pretty simply, I've just put everything inside of one component, my base component, duplicated it, made um, my um, version that I now have applied to my different variants. And now I've just customized those variants based on the Boolean properties that I've applied. So I've told the original component wherever it is. Oh, it's over here actually, sorry. <laughs> so this is the um, original uh, base component. And I've basically told Figma I want some of these elements to be able to be shown and hidden and that's what I've done here in this layers panel and then within these variants I've applied whether some things are shown and some things are hidden just to kind of simplify things. But if you wanted you could just pull this out and use it just as it is. So I can just say like oh I want to turn the left icon off and now I'm just customizing it. This will slow you down a decent bit, so I don't like to do things like this. Um, but you could just use one master or base input field and then customize it as you go. But I like to create these different variants just because it makes things much more streamlined. That way when I pull out an input field, I can say, okay, I want it to be a drop down rather than having to go in and, and make all the customizations that you just saw me make. And then let's make sure everything's working. So we've got active, error. So this is looking pretty good. Um, input, I've got my input there. I've got active, default. So that's looking nice. Now the only final thing that I wanted to show you guys today is a cool plugin that I've been using for my design systems called Popstar. And what I do is create a standalone table and very quickly that'll get generated. And now this uses my, um, these are my variants, and then this is just a duplicate of it with different instances, and it just lays it out really nicely in this clean table so that I can quickly visualize, okay, this is my active state. And you know, you're not probably seeing the importance of this right now, but imagine if I had you know, 30, 40 different input states I would just come in here, click go to main component, and then I can customize it however I need. Um, and like I said originally, if you've created things using um, this base component system that I've shown you today, you can pretty easily come in here and customize things. So let's say I wanna thicken up the border and I wanna get rid of the radius. Now I've just completely changed the style of my design system by changing it in one spot and it updates everywhere. And imagine if you have an entire file with 300 different instances of an input field, you've now just made a massive change by making it in one spot rather than you know 300 spots. So I hope you guys found this useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I hope to see you guys in the next video.